जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन व्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुन तीर वन चारी तीर वन चारी यमुन तीर वन चारीवन च जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी माधव कुंज बिहार जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय टुडे वी विल बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 7 चैप्टर 10 टेक्स्ट नंबर 6 अहम तु अकामस त्वद्भक्तस त्वम च स्वामी अनपाश्रयः नान्यथे हावयोर अर्थो राज सेवकयोर इव अहम तमस्वद्भक्त स्वाम्यन पाश्रय नान्यथे हावयोर अर्थो राजसेवकोरिव अहम तमस्वद्भक्त स्वाम्यन पाश्रय नान्यते हावयोरर्थ राजसेवकोरिव अहम तमस्वद्भक्त स्वाम्यन पाश्रय नान्यते हावयोरर्थ राजसेवकोरिव राजसेवक 
Aham, as far as I am concerned, tu, indeed, akamaha, without material desire, tvat bhaktaha, fully attached to you without motivation, tvamcha, your lordship also, svami, the real master, anapashrayaha, without motivation, you do not become the master with motivation. Na, not. Anyata, without being in such a relationship as master and servant. Iha, here. Avayoho, our. Artaha, any motivation. The Lord is the pure master. And Prahlad Maharaj is the pure devotee with no materialistic motivation. Raja of a king, Sevakayoho, and the servitor, Eva, just like, sorry, like. Just as a king exacts taxes for the benefit of the servant, or the citizens pay taxes for the benefit of the king. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. O my Lord, I am your unmotivated servant, and you are my eternal master. There is no need of our being anything other than master and servant. You are naturally my master, and I am naturally your servant. We have no other relationship. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Jibir Shorupoi Krishna Nityadas. Every living entity is eternally. So every living being is eternally a servant of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 529, I am the proprietor of all planets and I am the supreme enjoyer. This is the natural position of the Lord and the natural position of the living being is to surrender unto him. If this relationship continues, then real happiness exists eternally between the master and servant. Unfortunately, when this eternal relationship is disturbed, the living entity wants to become separately happy and thinks that the master is his order supplier. In this way, there cannot be happiness. Nor should the master cater to the desires of the servant. If he does, he is not the real master. The real master commands, you must do this, and the real servant immediately obeys the order. Unless this relationship between the Supreme Lord and the subordinate living entity is established, there can be no real happiness. The living entity is ashraya, always subordinate, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Vishaya, the Supreme Objective, the goal of life. Unfortunate persons trapped in this material world do not know this. Natevidu Svartagatim hi Vishnu. Sorry, Svartagatim hi Vishnu. Illusioned by the material energy, everyone in this material world is unaware of, that the only aim of life is to approach, is to approach Vishnu. Aradhanam, Aradhana. Aradhananam sarvesham vishnuraradhanam baram tasmat parataram devi didiyanam samarchanam In the Padma Purana, Lord Shiva explains to his wife Parvati, the goddess Durga, that the highest goal of life is to satisfy Lord Vishnu, who can be satisfied only when his servant is satisfied. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore teaches Gopi Bhartuf Padakamalayor Dasa Das Anudasaha. One must become a servant of the servant. Prahlad Maharaj also prayed to Lord Nrsimhadev that he might be engaged as the servant of the Lord's servant. This is the prescribed method of devotional service. As soon as a devotee wants the Supreme Personality of God to be his order supplier, the Lord immediately refuses to become the master of such a motivated devotee. In Bhagavad Gita 4.11, the Lord says, Ye mam tam bajamyaham. As one surrenders unto me, I reward him accordingly. 
Materialistic persons are generally inclined to material profits. As long as one continues in such an adulterated position, he does not receive the benefit of returning home back to Godhead. Could you grab me the, the actual physical book? Because I have my notes on my phone also. So I want to have both next to me. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sya Jnana Anjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manama Bishachi Putramatra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivara Mahuradhika Madhavasham Prapta Yasya Pradita Kripaya Shri Guram Tamdatos Minama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtai Buddhale Shrimate Bhakti Vikasa Swami Nitinami Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtai Buddhale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinami Nama Ste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prachayane Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschata Deshatayane Vancha Kalpatrubya Shakrapasan Hubi Ebacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhio Vaishnave Bhio Namonamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Prahlad Maharaj is replying to um, Lord Narsimha Dev's offering of some kind of benediction and here he's emphasizing in the last verse he emphasized uh, that if if I desired material profit from you I, I wouldn't be a qualified servant and here he's saying and in fact uh, I am your servant and you are my master so therefore I shouldn't desire anything from you and, and I don't desire anything from you so he brings up the, Prahlad Marge brings up the point here, you are naturally my master, and I'm naturally your servant. This is a, a, a natural relationship between the Jiva and the Supreme Lord, that it's just, that's how it is. Um, Krishna is God, and we are not God. It's just like if you have a relationship between a, a you know, the, 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 the president, for example, and, you know, some, you know, a, a, a police officer who, you know, just goes out on the street like a low-level deputy kind of police officer. The relationship is that the police officer is a very uh, low, you know, low on the ladder of government positions and the president's at the top. So the natural relationship there is that the police officer or any government officer is, is, is subordinate to the president. So in the same way, um, the jiva, the living entity being part and parcel of Krishna, Jivar Sarupoy Krishna Nityadas, like like well, like um Srila Prabhupada quotes in the beginning of this purport, the natural relationship between the, the, the living entity and the Supreme Lord is that the living entity is a servant of the Supreme Lord. The living uh, the Supreme Lord is master, and the living entity is the servant. Um, as Makunda was mentioning yesterday, there are many people who are I mean, most people, especially in, in Western culture, are uh, turned off, you could say, or, or a, a little bit averse to this concept of serv the relationship between servant and master. And um, anyway, there's this phrase now, especially amongst like kind of uh, underground sort of political, uh, I mean, anyway, kind of like Antifa kind of crowd. No gods, no masters. So the idea is no gods, no masters, nobody above, nobody below, just everybody is on an equal level. So this also is, is manifested in, I mean, of course, this is manifested in just in grossly sinful life when people, um, Krishna is the center of everything. Everything is meant for Krishna's enjoyment. He's the supreme enjoyer. This is one of you know, the many uh, ways in which we emphasize Krishna. Uh, many, one of the many qualities of Krishna which we emphasize. And, um, but when the living entity, uh, there's, there's people who, when the living entity is averse to the relationship between master and servant, then he himself tries to become the master. He himself tries to become the center, the enjoyer. And he sees everything in relation to his own enjoyment, just as Krishna does, rightfully so. We also see this uh, with people who are of the opinion, the wrong opinion, that they themselves are actually uh, the source of all spirit, the supreme Brahman, Mayavadis, as we 
say, and they, they also say. Um, Mayavadis, the Mayavad philosophy, is that um, when, 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 a, when a servant is perfect in serving his master, like they quote this thing from this so-called quote from Ramayana, where Hanuman's speaking to Lord Ram, and he says, when I don't know who I am, I serve you, and when I know who I am, I am you. Uh, this is a quote, this is, they, they quote Hanuman on this. But um, it's, it's a really just untenable, actually, position. It's, a, it's an untenable, impractical philosophy, which is why you see with these people, there's such a dissonance between their philosophy and their conduct. These, these people pose themselves as God, as the source of everything. But you see throughout their daily life, most of them, because it's such an untenable, impractical philosophy, most of them end up just falling into gross sense gratification, just, just their, their lives in general, because they can't really do anything with that philosophy. Um, they live basically as materialists. And Srila Prabhupada brings this up in one um, purport. He describes that the Mayavadis at Kashi, at Varnasi, and the Buddhists at Sarnath are gross materialists. Which is an interesting statement because if, when you think of Buddhists and Mayavadis, I mean, and it, it's true actually, they are very austere people actually. Many of them are very learned, many of them are actually very detached from you know, sense gratification. So it's very interesting to call them gross materialists uh, my spiritual master is Holiness Bhakti Vikas Swami. He, was, uh, he mentions this in some classes, how he used to preach in, in Thailand, in Bangkok specifically. And Thailand traditionally is a, is a very staunch Theravada Buddhist country, Theravada Buddhism being the very strict, like original, traditional form of Buddhism. And of course, they believe in reincarnation. And so he was talking to one person, and he was mentioning that, that Thai people in general, the, and this isn't to you know, just bash Thai people, but um, it's, it's a good example, that, that he was, the, the Thai people in general are very kind of happy, go lucky, kind of jolly people. And there's this word that is very well known in Thailand, apparently, the word is sanuk. And sanuk is a kind of carefree, happiness, jolly kind of happiness. Sanuk. So he was speaking to um, one woman who came to the temple. And Thai people also love pork. So he was speaking to her and saying, you know, you, will, you believe in reincarnation? She said, yes. And he, he asked her, he said, but you know, but you, but you eat meat, you eat pork, you like pork? And she said, yes. And he said, but don't you know that you're going to be, have to be a pig in your next life? And she said, it'll be sanuk. It'll be nice. You know, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be nice. It'll be, it'll be a good time. So the, the, the process of Mayavad and Buddhism and these kind of traditions is so difficult. And, and the goal, the, the, the philosophy behind it is so impractical, so unnatural, like, like Prahlad Maharaj here is saying. That generally just leads to people becoming gross sense gratifiers, pretty much. Which is why Srila Prabhupada describes that the Buddhists at Sarnath and the uh, Mayavadis at Kashi are gross materialists, because that's what it leads to, basically speaking. So Srila Prabhupada says that in this purport, that if the relationship between master and servant continues, the natural relationship continues, then there can be real happiness. He says real happiness exists between the master and the Servant. So like I was saying, this is counterintuitive to material consciousness. Um, wherein one thinks, uh, like, like uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Ishwaro ham maham bogi, siddho ham balavan suki, that I'm very, I'm the controller, I'm very powerful, I'm perfect, I'm happy. And this way people think, who can be my master? They think, who can be my master? Many people, even when they come to Krishna consciousness, it's a very difficult thing. I mean, everybody has difficulty with authority. 
um, especially those coming from uh, Western backgrounds, it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to, ex to accept an authority. Even, even for, for people to accept their parents as an authority is a very difficult thing. And that's, you know, that's a natural relationship. But even that is, it's very difficult for people. There's, especially now, a day such a culture of distrust of authority. And not, not just distrust, but just an assumption that anything an authority says must be wrong because it's said by an authority. Or so-called authority, so they think. So, Srila Prabhupada describes one way in this, rela this natural relationship becomes disturbed. He says that the, the living entity uses the Lord as an order supplier. People distrust authorities, like, like we have, there's so many people now um, in America, for example, who say, oh, the government this, the government that, the government this. They talk so much bad about the government. But they don't want to get rid of the government. They get benefits from the government. And by the way, this isn't just like a dig on, you know, I'm not taking any sides. But just as an example, um, it's there. In the, same way, in the same way as a child will um, say, you know, to his parents, oh, I hate you, I wish I was never born. But when his parents say, okay, go, get out of the house, he'll start crying, he'll run to his mother, he'll give him a hug. And so in the same way, um, the living entity um, becomes averse to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, wants to himself become the master, but he wants to use the Lord as an order supplier to get what he wants. This um, example comes up in Srimad Bhagavatam. Not a, uh, of course, it was a little more innocent. Uh, but with Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, he had a desire, a very big desire, to basically take revenge on his, on his stepmother, but, but also kind of on his father, um, because, yes, he was offended by his stepmother, but he, the, the real offense was that it was ratified by his, or accepted or approved by his father. His father didn't say anything. That's what really, because, okay, somebody says something to you. Somebody you don't like, or somebody that you know doesn't like you says something to you. It's okay, whatever. But then if somebody you like says, well, he's right, you know, then it really hurts. So in the same way, Dhruva Maharaj, he was very much offended. And so he wanted to take revenge. He wanted to get a kingdom even greater than that of Lord Brahma to show his father and his, what would you say, stepmother? Yeah, stepmother. That uh, I don't need you. Look at me. I have, a, I have a kingdom greater than Lord Brahma. So <clears throat> he approached Krishna. He was instructed by his, his own mother, his biological mother, um, that you should approach the Supreme Lord. I've heard that he's found in the forest, so you should go to the forest and approach the Supreme Lord, and he, only he can help you. Only he can fulfill your desire. So he engaged in such severe austerities. But uh, Srila Prabhupada makes the point that here in this purport, uh, where does he say in this way, there cannot be happiness. If he thinks that the master is his order supplier, there can be no happiness there. And, and, and Dhruva Maharaj says this in his prayers when, when Narayan appears before him. He says, Svarajam yachato modhyan mano me bhikshito bata ishvarat kshina punyena pali karani vadhana. He says that just, I, I, I'm, I'm something like a, a beggar. I wanted complete independence. I wanted to be the master. I wanted to... Um, you know, be you know in some big, big position, have my desires fulfilled. But he said, I, I, I was like a, and so he said, in this way, I approached you, I, I, I came and, and I, I asked you. And so, but he said, it's something like I'm, I'm a beggar, an adhana, someone who has no wealth, going up to a king, an emperor, <clears throat> and asking for a few grains of, a few husks of wheat, not even the actual grain, just the husks. So he says, in this way, uh, I'm a fool. All right, I was acting foolishly. And Srila Prabhupada, in his purport to that verse, he, he specifically hides those words, Svarajyam. Anybody from India basically knows this. Svaraj, independence. So, um, Svaraj literally means ruling yourself. Srila Prabhupada brings up in this purport that the conditioned soul thinks that 
fighting with Maya just by himself, just fighting the obstacles that Maya is putting in front of him by himself with no help. He thinks that's complete independence. But real independence actually is to acknowledge the relationship between master and servant, like, like Pladmar is saying here, the natural relationship. Just like when a child, if a child goes out on his own without his parents, he might be playing here or there. There's every risk that he might be, you know, picked up by someone um, or even picked up by the police saying, where are your parents? You can't be out here alone. Or, you know, picked up by somebody nefarious with malicious intent in that way. But if the child, <clears throat> but if the parent is watching the child, then the child can do anything he wants. The child can go here and there because he's under the supervision of the parent. The child can play in complete independence under the supervision of a parent. But without that supervision, he, 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 has no, he doesn't stand a chance. He's not, he's not independent because he doesn't himself stand a chance against the world. So in the same way, we stand no chance against Maya. We stand no chance against the material energy. We stand no chance against our conditioning, our desires. So the only uh, refuge, the only, the only, our only hope really is to depend on the master, to depend on Krishna. Otherwise, it's just struggling for existence, like Srila Prabhupada says. So, quotes in this verse without somebody who's in material consciousness they can't understand this they can't understand that to be dependent especially not dependent on Krishna is actual real independence they see that okay I surrender to Krishna and I have to follow this and this and this and I can't do this and I can't do that and oh I want to do this and I want to do that and and uh, so many things they they see that it that it's it's a, they feel themselves, that it's an obstacle to my happiness. Which is why, the, in general, people have, have, have rejected religion, have rejected, um, I mean, really any kind of authority, but especially religion, have, have rejected religion or spirituality because they see it as, as, as a, an obstacle to their happiness. Their happiness, of course, being sense gratification, just gross, unadulterated, sense gratification. So, and therefore, and, and later in this verse, those who are, um, who, who um, consider the, the external things as very important. This uh, same concept comes up, that <coughs> they become bound. They become bound by the ropes of fruit of activity, which are made of very strong cords. So they think that they're independent, but they're actually not. And how are they bound? This verse says is that they follow very, they follow blind people. They're blind themselves, and they follow blind people. And therefore they fall into a ditch, and they're bound by these ropes. So, Srila Prabhupada also brings this up in the purport. He says that the master should not cater to the desires of the servant. In what, from one perspective, you could say, yes, that the living entity, shouldn't, the, the servant shouldn't try to become the master, but the master in many ways also should not try to pose himself as a servant. Of course, the master serves the disciple in his own way, but it's not that the master just caters to the every desire of the servant. Srila Prabhupada says, the real master commands, you must do this. And the servant obeys his order immediately. He says, you must do this, you must do that, you must not do this, you must not do that. And the servant obeys. There is a... Um, everyone here is familiar with the Westboro Baptist Church, I assume, most people. Westboro Baptist Church is an is a ex extreme... Christian group, kind of fanatical Christian group. They protest at like veterans' funerals and stuff like that, saying God killed him and God's happy that he's dead, that kind of thing. They were protesting outside of one church. And uh, for those who are, who are familiar, Joel Osteen, uh, pr uh, prosperity preacher. Yeah, we love Joel. Prosperity preacher who says basically if God favors you, then he gives you money. And it's very kind of self, 
basically this idea that Srila Prabhupada is bringing up here, catering to the desires of the servant. Everybody wants money, everybody wants happiness, everybody wants prosperity. So if you say that, uh, yes, be prosperous, go after you know, material prosperity, go after sense gratification, do this, do that, and, and, the, and the sign that God loves you, that God is favoring you, is that He's gratifying your senses. People like to hear it. So the Westboro Baptist Church, and frankly, I think rightfully so, were preaching out or, 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 or protesting this. Now, of course, the exact way they were protesting, maybe we, you know, that could be discussed. But it should be protested against, actually. Um, so they were, they were protesting, saying that this person is wrong, this person is a false prophet, this person is a demon. And somebody was interviewed, it was, it was a news article about it, somebody was interviewed saying, um, why, should, why, should, why should I, you know, who are, what kind of church is this? They're, they're just yelling and they're saying that this guy's wrong. Who are we to judge? I'd rather go to his church where he makes us feel good about ourselves rather than go to his church where, where they're just yelling about this person's wrong, that person's wrong. So it seems like, you know, from, from, a, from a materialist perspective, it seems like, oh, saying this and you must do this and you must do that. This person must be on a big trip a big ego trip. They must have a huge ego. Um, and they just get off on being a master. But the master serves the disciple firstly by becoming a servant of Krishna. He becomes a servant of Krishna. And part of being a servant of Krishna is bringing people closer to him. And so in order to bring people closer to Krishna, you have to, it's not just, okay, bring people closer to Krishna, but you have to take them away from other things. Because there's things that they're doing, there's things that they're engrossed in, which are taking them away from Krishna. And the two things cannot coexist. Material life and spiritual life do not coexist. So, therefore, the Master instructs the disciple, you must do this, you must worship Krishna, you must chant your rounds, you must, you know, avoid these things, avoid sinful activity, avoid, you know, meat-eating, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, etc., amongst many other things. So, so he has to instruct. And, it, and, 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 and this instruction is actually, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur makes the point that, it's, that, that it's, it's a symptom of his humility. He brings up that um, the, the, the Hanuman's burning of Lanka. <laughs> Hanuman's burning of Lanka is the purport of Trinadapi Sunichena Tororipa uh, Iva Sahishtuna. So that to be more humble than, than, a, than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, thinking all respect belongs to others, taking one no respect for oneself, and in this way always being able to chant the Holy Name or to be being able to worship Krishna. Being Hanuman's burning of the city of Lanka is a symptom of his humility. Why? Because he was willing to do anything for Lord Ram. It's not, that, it's not that he was just angry because Ravana, uh, you know, violated, him, you know, or offended him or, 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 or became an obstacle to his sense gratification. Therefore, he burned Lanka. But no, he went out, he jumped all the way to Lanka and he burned Lanka. And what was he saying? He was saying, Jai Sri Ram. He wasn't saying, he wasn't saying, um, look at me, look how powerful I am. He was saying, Jai Sri Ram. So, Yadanu Dhyasana Yukta, Karma Granthim Nibandhana Chindanti Ko Vidasta Se Kona Kuryat Kataratim. The sadhus, they, they, with sword in hand, they cut the knots, the very strong knots of attachment to fruit of activity, attachment to sense gratification. And therefore, this verse says, therefore, who, who could not be attracted to their um, speaking, to what they say? The point is made that, 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 that one who is sincerely attracted to truth doesn't see this as, as false ego. They see it as, this person is my well-wisher. Because real humility is inseparable from adherence to truth. If we are really humble, if we are really um, sold out, then we don't, we, we, we don't of course, um, go out of our way 
to to aggrandize ourselves or, or, or for our own sense gratification, for our own purposes. And similarly, we don't avoid going out for our own purposes. We don't avoid going out of our way to serve Krishna. We don't avoid going out of our way to, to speak to people, to, to correct, to do all these things for the service, for establishing the absolute truth. So therefore, one who is sincere, who is sincere about understanding the absolute truth, he serves such a devotee. Therefore, it says, Who, who is, who, uh, would, what sincere person would not be attracted? Because by that association, Srila Prabhupada says, this is the prescribed method of a devotional service to become engaged as the servant of the Lord's servant. So by serving such a person, what's that verse? Krishna tells Arjuna that in order to understand the you know, topics of me, in order to understand me, who I am, you have to approach a guru. You have to serve him. You have to, to, to surrender to him. By, by asking uh, questions, inquiring, uh, and sevaya, by service. Uh, these people can give you knowledge. Why? Because they're jnaninas tattva darshina. Because they have, they have themselves realized this knowledge. Otherwise, like, like Srila Prabhupada is saying here, for, for such a motivated devotee, the, the Lord refuses to become the master. First you take care of a fish, then you take care of a dog. Sorry. <laughs> First you take care of a fish, then you take care of a dog. No, I heard it from Mukunda, actually. So that's why I was looking at the camera, because Mukunda's watching. So I was looking at him. Um, First you take care of a fish, then you take care of a dog. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna is very, very happy, very much wants the living entities to serve him, even directly. However, if the living entity first can't prove that he can serve his own spiritual master, if he can't serve the devotee, then, then there's no question. There's no question of being like Srila Prabhupada says, as long as one continues in such an adulterated position, he does not receive the benefit of returning home, back home back to Godhead. Why should Krishna let us back home back to Godhead? If we can't, if we can't serve as devotees, if we can't get along, if we can't, um, uh, you know, with the devotees, if we can't follow the instructions of the spiritual master, why should Krishna let us back home back to Godhead? It doesn't make sense. Just like why should, why should, you, be, why should you be allowed in the um, you know, doctorate mathematics program at Harvard, if if you if you if you haven't passed calculus in high school, if you got if you failed calculus in high school, why should you be allowed? It doesn't make any sense. You won't get any benefit. Neither, and and you'll cause a disturbance to the atmosphere. So why should it be allowed? Therefore. We, we, we have to prove ourselves. We, we have to become unadulterated. And this unadulterated position means ananyash chintayantomam, thinking of nothing else but Krishna, having no other consciousness but Krishna. Ananyash chintayantomam, yejana paribhasate, tesham nityabhyuktanam, yoga kshema vahamyam. And if we do that, then Krishna will take care of it. Krishna will, 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 will help us. Uh, what's that verse? That if we desire to serve Krishna, if, we, if we're always striving and endeavoring, satata yuktanam, always engaged, then Krishna gives us the intelligence how we can progress. The real unadulterated position is, is, is um, anyabhilashita shunyam, jnana karma dinavritam. Approaching Krishna with no tinge of desire for jnana, means jnana, impersonal knowledge, uh, knowledge which is, or not just impersonal knowledge, but knowledge which, which isn't in relation to Krishna consciousness, uncovered by, by desire for fruit of activity or for, for the results of fruit of activity. No other desire. Anyabhilashita shunyam. So first we have to, to, we have to prove ourselves that, that we can act in that position by, by serving the spiritual master, by serving the devotee of Krishna, 
we we prove like should like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his purport and he he this verse Trinadapi Suni Chena again. He says that um that the the first step is is serving service of the, to the spiritual master. The first step of Trinadapi Suni Chena is service to the spiritual master, the instructions of the spiritual master. So the spiritual master instructs us, you follow these different rules and regulations sincerely, consciously, with the desire to attain the 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 goal. And like Shilo Prabhupada quotes, As one surrenders to me, I, I reward him accordingly. So to the extent that we're surrendered, Krishna will help us. I will stop there because it's 8.32 if there are any comments or questions. Yes. Editorial comments. This... Uh this word that's kind of integrated into our lingo, unmotivated devotional service. We're looking for unmotivated. The motive is the reason you do something. Yes. It's not necessarily material. It can be a spiritual motive like love. And so that, in our own preaching, because the books are, are, are filled with that, and I don't think we're going to you know, you know, carefully take them out, but in your own understanding and in your preaching uh, it's important to add that word materially motivated mm. and not materially motivated without material motivation because it's kind of confusing well, why are you doing it if you don't have any motive mm. I just sit there like a rock yeah. <laughs> Jai That was really <laughs> casual. I didn't even flinch. It's My question was, uh, I guess this part was it says, uh, let me find it real quick, actually. Then. It's important, I guess if uh, trying to understand that one real like doesn't see the Lord as the supplier, but if I don't see the Lord as the supplier, I'm just acting on my own like accord, thinking I'm the doer. So order po- supplier. Yeah. Order su- or, but order supplier is different from supplier. Because seeing the Lord as one's maintainer is actually is one of the uh, one of the limbs of Sharnagati. But seeing the Lord as one's order supplier means I order him and he supplies. Um so the the the, the pure devotee doesn't doesn't order the Lord, but he does see that the Lord is supplying everything for me. Like this uh, Yoga Krema Bahamyaham. He's supplying everything for me. Out of his mercy, not because I'm ordering him, but be- out of his mercy, out of his kindness toward me, he is, uh, yeah, out of his general kindness, his causeless mercy, he's maintaining me, even though I'm undeserving. So, yeah, there's a distinction between supplier and order supplier, because order supplier means I'm ordering and he's supplying, whereas supplier just means out of his causeless mercy, he is supplying me with whatever I need. Anything more? Well, I was saying about like in the in the limbs, like if somebody is pouring for, like sacrifices and like karma yoga, and how they like, yeah, they're like in a sense, they kind of see them as order supply because or some type of they're expecting some result for their for their actions and stuff. So therefore, yeah, how they gradually evaluated and stuff. Like that. Well, Krishna brings us up uh, in his his argument to um, Nanda Maharaj. In the tenth canto, in the right before the Govardhan Lila, he's telling. Uh, of course, he's not talking about worshiping God per se, but he he's telling Nanda Maharaj, "What's the use of worshiping Indra? Rain rains all rain. The Indra drops rain on the rocks and on the ocean. What's the use of worshiping him? You know, just do what you have to do, and rain will come. Um, no use in worshiping him. So uh, this is the the point of view of the. Mimamsa goes, Purva Mimamsa, that anyway, no use in worshiping God, no use in, maybe there's a God, maybe there's not. Um, doesn't, Purva Mimamsa doesn't really deal with it. Maybe there's a God, maybe there's not. But anyway, we definitely know that there's karma, and we definitely know that by doing this and this and this, we can get good karma, and by avoiding this and this and this, we can avoid bad karma. So we'll just do this, this, and this, get good karma, and we'll just be able to enjoy in this world. 
So they say, no, no need, no need to worship God. Whether there's, whether there's a supreme abode or not, we can make this, we can enjoy here just by working the laws of karma. So uh, in one sense, they're seeing the Lord as an order supplier, you could say. In many ways, they're not even really seeing the Lord. They're just, they're just seeing that my orders are being supplied. Just like when we order something on Amazon or something like that, I don't really, we, you don't really give a damn where it comes from as long as it gets to your door. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, made with love. Yeah. But yeah, order it's ordered with money. That's yeah. So it's, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just a business. It's just working the laws of material nature. Just, just, it's like working the stock market. It's the same thing. If you know how to move things around in the stock market, you can make a lot of money. So similarly, if you know how to work the laws of karma, you can really make a nice situation for, for yourself. So that's the goal of Purva Mimamsa. Of course, are you going to rem- like, okay, you get good karma and you go to, you go to Svarga Loka, then you come back and it's like, okay, are you going to remember that you're a Purva Mimamsaka? Are you going to remember that whole philosophy? No, you're just going to forget it. You go to Svarga Loka and then you come down and maybe you take birth in a Smartha family and you become a Mayavari. Your philosophy changes according to the, according to the, the, the body you get. The mind also changes. So it's not that you'll be a poor Mimamsaka in your next life guaranteed. Uh, so anyway, sorry. This is a refutation of poor Mimamsa. But. Also with this idea of learning how to uh, how to play the karma game, you know, how to make everything nice in this world is very dangerous, especially in this age, because um, there's so much, there, there's so many opportunities to fall from that position of goodness. And, um, and Srila Prabhupada even said something, some, sometimes very dramatically, uh, he, he commented on this point. He said, he was with some disciples and they're at someone's home and and it was interesting they were over at his home I don't know what they're doing having prasadam or meeting him or something like that you know it was a pious Indian fellow and then Srila Prabhupada told his disciples he said you see that man over there and the devotee said yes he said that he could he could continue following Varn Ashram but without taking to Krishna consciousness he'll go to hell <clears throat> it's very interesting. In other words, he could continue trying to be a good person, you know, just being a good person, but eventually there has to be some, mis- he's going to make some mistakes, and it may, you know, be very uh, intense mistakes, or gradually, you know, spiral. That was just a comment on mm-hmm. this. Reminds me of that verse in Pancharatra. I do have a question, yeah. though. Oh, you do have a question? Okay. Yeah, but you could. Okay, I was just thinking, it reminds me of that verse in Pancharatra. Um, what is it? If one if one worships Krishna, then what's the use of severe austerities? If one doesn't worship Krishna, what's the use of severe austerities? If one sees Krishna inside and out, what's the use of severe austerities? And if one doesn't see Krishna inside and out, what's the use of severe austerities? Yeah. Yeah. So, in relation to the spiritual master and disciple relationship, you have Chanaka Pandit. Of course, this is not, uh, he's not speaking about the guru disciple relationship, but he's speaking about the relationship between a parent and a child. And I'm just wondering if you have some thoughts in relation, if there's any correlation between them. Him saying how a child or a father or a parent should, from an age of up to five, they should uh, be very, what is it, sweet and not spoil them. And then from five to 15 or 16 or whatever it is, you have to be very um, strict with them, correcting them, and so on. Then afterwards, you treat him as a friend. Now, this is in relation to, he, he mentions this in relation to parents and children. And the, the, the relationship many times throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam and other places, it describes that the, yeah, like the spiritual master is the father, the Vedas are the mother. And many devotees 
may see the spiritual master like that as, as, as a father, a spiritual father connecting them to Krishna. So is there any correlation between that statement of Chanaka Pandit and... Do, do you have any thoughts about it? Sorry, sorry, I was asking you. Balar. No, I was asking Balar. Speculative thoughts? <laughs> Speculative thoughts. Yeah, Dharma Sage Prabhu. I mean, I, 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 I could say something, but I just wanted to, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, I don't have any Shastra for it, so I, I better. Oh, it's just practical observation and relationships. Yeah. Why is that young child treated like that? Because that's how you have to treat a child up in the five. They just don't mm-hmm. have the maturity or whatever. So in our preaching or relationship, you have people coming. And they're just starting out in their spiritual life, and they're not ready. They don't even want to. They're not ready for strictness and so on. So we're pasadam and this and that and so on. But then when they come to the point, the five-year-old means guru kula, student. Now mm-hmm. you're serious. Okay, now you're serious? Okay, I'm serious too. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Krishna Arjun says, uh, you know, sishasteham sarimam tvamparapanam. Now let's stop the friendly stuff, and I'm your disciple. Okay, disciple means discipline and uh, that's there but even Prabhupada said he's speaking sometimes to his disciples out there older he said I can't instruct you you know when you become uh, accomplished in spiritual life then even the spiritual master he's always your spiritual master but because of your maturity the relationship changes so it's all a matter of growth and you have to be perceptive you know, if someone walks in the front door, you don't get on their case. You just, but someone who's supposed to be in the kitchen doing the pots, get in the kitchen and do the pots, you know? So like that, it's just a relationship and cultivation. I'll, I'll, I'll give an, I guess I could think of an example with, with my own spiritual master, because that's the guru-disciple relationship I'm most familiar with. Um, Seems like with younger disciples with of my spiritual master, he's quite. Uh, it means he 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 he'll give them instructions. He'll tell them what to do. Um, he'll say, "No, this isn't a good idea. That's not a good idea." And uh, I mean, he's also at the same time he's also very gentle and very accommodating. Uh, but he's he's he. There's there's. You could see that there's a relationship there between a master and a servant, and the servant, I mean, the master, of course, is, is accommodating and tries to help the servant um, in, in whatever way he can, but it's very clear. Whereas with, with some senior disciples, he can, he, you know, he's like with Gokul Chandra Peru, uh, the, the temple president in Salem, he, um, Gokul Chandra Peru was telling me that, that they discuss things, and sometimes he'll tell my spiritual master, no, that's not a good idea. And, you know, they discuss, and He's willing to accept. So, in the same way, in the beginning of this of the guru disciple relationship, because there's not as much of a connection there, there's not as much trust that the guru hasn't observed the how how the, the you know the disciple's personality hasn't been around him long enough to see his propensities, his inclinations, his his issues. Um, he's it's a, there's a little bit more of a distance. So if, 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 for instance, I was going to, or, or maybe there's, there's less trust. So if, if I were to go to my spiritual master or, or if, or if, you know, if, if a very junior disciple of Srila Prabhupada at, you know, during Srila Prabhupada's time were to go to Srila Prabhupada and say, Prabhupada, I really don't think that this is a good idea. I really don't think you should be like, you know, Prabhupada would sometimes ask devotees, you know, um, or, or, or like, like his servant would sometimes instruct him, like Srila Prabhupada, please don't, don't, uh, don't travel. It's not good for your health right now. You know, just and then Shula Prabhupada would say, "No, I want to go." But they would say, "Shula Prabhupada, we, I really don't think this is a good idea." If a junior disciple, a very junior disciple, were to go to Shula Prabhupada and say, "Shula Prabhupada, I don't think you should take this trip. It's not. It, it won't be good for your health." You know, it's like who's this person? You know. But if there's trust there, if there's if there's a if there's a mature relationship there, then there's trust enough there that that that, that they there can be a, some kind of exchange. So in that way, you could say it's kind of like becoming a friend. Of course. Master is always the master, servant's always a servant. But and just in relation to what you were saying. Yeah, so is the parent, yeah. Yeah.
Yes, Prabhu. Uh, somehow this came to my mind uh, how uh, the, um, the beneficial relation with the, with the spiritual master is when you welcome chastisement. And it reminds me of this passage, you probably know this verse, when, uh, after the Isla Gita. And uh, Isla, what is his name, Pururava? I think Pururava. He finally says, what is this, you know, this, this craziness with the Urbashi, you know, and, and I just wasted my life and I sold out. You know. So he had actually renounced. And then uh, Krishna then said to him, yes, Tato Duksanga Mutsurja. Santu, uh, uh, what is it? Tato Sajja Sajjeta Buddhima. What is it? Satsu Sajjeta Sajj yes, Buddhima. Buddhima. Santa Evasta Chinnadi Mano Vyasaga Mukti Bhi. That the, we, 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 we need to be able to uh, welcome, when, when, give up, throw it away, all this bad association, and associate with saints. And of course, the most important saint is your own spiritual master. Because the saints, by their strong words, they like like knives to cut out these strongly impacted material desires in your heart. Mano vyasangam. You know, v is a, they're, they're, they're tightly in there, but they can cut them out with their, with their words. So that's, that's a great bene benefit, but it, you have to be mature enough to be willing to take that. And probably the books are filled with that kind of instruction, you know. And some people, they... they it's a, it's they need you know to, the devotees to to help them to to be able to read that with great benefit and accept it. You know. Hare Krishna. Granth Raja Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.